Lord Varys. I, Daenerys of House Targaryen, first of my name, breaker of chains and mother of dragons. Sentence you to die. Tricaris. Welcome, Batman fuckers, to Geek Salad episode 217. Shake hands with Lucille. I'm Andy. I'm Mike. I'm Joe. I'm Catherine. And tonight we are talking all about the shows that, for some reason or another, we ju- it took a lot of strength and a lot of willpower to finally divorce. <laughs> um, this is not to be confused with an episode we did a few years ago, about like three and a half years ago, which was episode 157, um, Three and a Half Meningitis, where we uh, <laughs> discussed shows that went on a little too long. Um, many of these shows, yes, indeed, did go on far too long. But far, it was just like, long. what was your breaking point? What was the point where you finally said, enough is enough, I ha- I don't enjoy watching this show but um but i i just i i have to keep watching it's like i just it, at the end of the tunnel there's got to be a pot of gold right you, you, right you get sucked in and all of a sudden it's like it's what it was that fallacy that um where you dig a hole and you just keep digging deeper oh, oh, the, uh, oh the, the the cost loss fallacy or something like, yeah, like that. yeah 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 i was talking about that with a coworker recently because He's like, he's got cars that are on their last legs and I've got a car that's like, oh, I could pay $10,000 to fix the engine at 187,000 miles or I could buy a new car in the new economy. So yeah. right, it's, like, yeah, it's, like, it's, it's like, okay, well, I've already spent all this money and time. Well, if I keep spending more money and time on it, it'll get better. It's like, mm, yeah, no. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, I mean, that's Three Stooges logic right there. Right. <laughs> We're in a hole. Let's dig our way out. Exactly. That, yeah, that's the cost, the lost cost, the uh, cost loss fallacy. Lo- uh, like lost some, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So let's um let's hit up social media straight up because we got a lot of of social media feedback, which is really going to dictate the entire course of today's show. We'll start with Facebook uh, with Catherine's husband Joe. Who brought up Disney gargoyles got really esoteric by the end. To which Mike replied, Joe, I try not to think about that third season. All humanity has to pay for what they did to our kind. There is good and evil in all of us. Human and gargoyle alike. You should know that more than anyone. Don't you see? None of this would have happened if it weren't for you. Don't say that! Goliath, this is your last chance. Humanity is a poison that must be purged from this planet. Together, you and I can create a new world for our kind. You trusted me once. You loved me once. We have found each other again after a thousand years of solitude. Does that mean nothing to you? (laughs) <laughs> so is it like one of those things where after like the first i heard the first season is just amazing and it's just one of those shows i never watched because you know i was a functioning adult when it came out and by first, functioning not really but the well, first was, two seasons was, are amazing yeah, it was popular when i was in college yeah so yeah yeah when we were in college it was like it was the thing to watch Okay, kind of like for me, it was the tick. Yeah. Oh, the tick which, was amazing. Which, which tick? Animated oh, the, tick? 
The animated, animated tick. The animated tick with Chairface Chippendale and uh, with with the with, with the most amazing continuity out of any cartoon I'd ever seen. Where like they actually the, like the Cha is in the moon in every episode. Yep. Batman well. <laughs> Batman, that well, was... they, they change his name every time they, they change the series. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that reminds me of one that Mike, um, our, our, our co-host, Mike C., who cannot be here, brought up another college show that we watched, X-Men, the animated series, yep. as being a one that it, it took. It was really tough for him to quit that after the Dark Phoenix saga. When you fought Michael, you said nothing about this madness. You spoke of creating an alternate future in which mutants would rule, as I have always dreamed. Then you were fool enough to believe me. Strike him down, my horsemen! I never believed you, Apocalypse. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I, uh, I totally watched uh, 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 Gargoyles in college. Yeah. yeah. Partly just because I love uh, Star Trek The Next Generation. And it's like, okay, we got Jonathan Frakes, we got Michael Dorn, we got Marina Sirtis. I'm okay. Yep. And Keith David. He's not from Star Trek, but he's just fantastic. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, you know, I've been told I have to watch. I know it's on Disney Plus. I just. The, the first two seasons are just. So mind blowingly amazing, especially the second season. It really it, it goes full on Shakespeare. Okay. And then the third season, the uh, original creator left, and they decided to do stuff without him, and it just kind of re- really ran uh, out. Yep. Yeah, that sounds a lot. Uh, honestly, that does sound a lot like um, like X Men as well. Because yeah. I remember being so excited when when Disney Plus came up. I'm going to show my son X-Men the Animated Series. I remember this show being the fucking bomb. <laughs> oh, my God. The animation, I mean, throughout is janky. I tried getting through a few episodes of it, and it was just like, what are we doing? That is, it, it's just exactly, what, what is the point of me doing this to you, boy? That, that, is one of, that is one of those shows that lives off more off its nostalgia than any actual quality. Oh, absolutely. Jean Grey isn't built like a normal human being should be built. Well, the, well, you got to remember this is Rob Liefeld early nineties. Uh. Yeah, it's 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 also comic books. They're not drawn to be realistic. That that is expressly stated in the How to Draw the Marvel Wake uh, instruction book. Right. It's like right. you are drawing exaggerated people for more artistic reasons. It's like this is what a basic person would look like. We're blowing it up more. So you nope. can't blame them entirely for that. But yeah, the the animation actual is bad. Um uh the the speaking roles like Rogue were uh painful. Um, <laughs> like could you, could you get somebody that could actually try to do the accent half decently? Maybe. I'm still, I'm still just convinced that the only reason why uh, Xavier's in the floating chair is because the animators are too lazy to make wheels that actually of move. Of course. No, 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 no. He actually definitely got that look from Leandra. That's, I do have that in actual comic book form. Okay, but yeah. Still, but it still makes more sense that they're going to do it, if, even if it wasn't in comic books, knowing right. how the, Amer- the American animation industry works. He did it because it was cheap. <laughs> yeah. Considering they, they, when the when the show premiered, he's got the he's got the floating hover chair, and they hadn't introduced the Shi'ar yet. Mm. And, and and you know, you know, it did give us one of the most uh, iconic meme. You know, the, the series did give us one of those iconic memes ever. So the 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 sad Wolverine and the yep. uh, the sad uh, 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 Cyclops. Yep. <laughs> God. Scotty didn't know. Scotty didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that was all. But, the I mean, yeah. To, go um, ahead. But, you know, in in X Men, the MA series's um, defense, it was kind of my introduction into the X Men comics. Okay. I, I really was not a comic book fan before that, and then I saw this. I'm like, well, that's kind of cool. I, I want to know more about this. Okay. 
So, I mean, I, I was just like, I was a fanatic for X-Men for years and years prior to that. But, mm-hmm. yeah. So that was all we got for Facebook. We got a ton of, actually, uh, my hat's off to our Twitter peeps, because not only did we get responses on our own thing, people were, like, quote tweeting this to get even more and reach out to more people. So thank you, everybody. So I'll be I'll be reading off names in a few. And we're going to start with our buddy Kurt at Swayze of Arabia, who says, I'm blanking, I can't think of any, and then goes on to list, I stopped watching <laughs> The Walking Dead, The Simpsons, Family Guy, and the last season of uh, Game of Thrones I watched was season six. Let's break that down. So first off, The Walking Dead, uh, which is one of my picks, and holy hell, I think I finally gave up when the the dude with the CG tiger showed up. Oh, God. Well, yeah, you know that, what? Was, that was around the season I gave up. I'm like, I like his performance, but everything else that season was just like, oh, oh God. All right. We got a full boat. Let's meet the man. Pissing our pants yet? Boy, do I have a feeling we're getting close. Yeah. Gonna be PP Pan City here real soon. I don't know, it's, Jeff, it's, it's, Jeffrey, it's, what's his face as as Negan was just like too Jeffrey Dean Morgan, yeah. Yeah, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I'm like, well, you were good on Supernatural. You were tolerable in Zack Snyder's Watchmen movie because you were playing a wretched character. But, oh, my God, you're just so cartoony. Like, yeah, he was terrible. That's yeah. what we get. And I just I tried to stick it out because I was like, you know, there's going to be eventually there'll be some payoff outside of the whole the season leads to a big boss. Right. And honestly, the last good season finale they had was the one where they were trapped in that rail car. And then it's revealed that the reason they're trapped in there is because they are being held captive by these people who are literally cannib- are cannibals. Oh, yeah, th- those guys. What and- a great way to end a season. And after that, it's like, oh, God. Do I have to it's- wait for Stephen Young's character to maybe die this time? Ugh. Yeah, no, he, like, had that, that other death, which I was like, I think he doesn't die. And he came back, and then they, like, killed him by Negan. And I'm like, I'm done. Yep. Yeah, by that point it was just like this is this is stupid. I don't I don't get it anymore. And it's just they they veered off the track of the comic book so early that I can understand it being its own thing. Yeah. You know. Very very similar to how Game of Thrones that I don't th- you know, and I'll say this straight up about Game of Thrones. Um what's his name? Uh Martin George R. R. Martin. Martin has zero room to complain about how that show turned out because they followed those books pretty goddamn well until he stopped writing them. Yeah. Well, he gave them, he gave them the outline of what he was planning. And then like those guys were doing so well with game of Thrones that they got tapped to do star Wars. And then they were like, Oh, we got to hurry up and finish this so we can do star Wars. And then they didn't. And right. then they sprinted, they sprinted through everything. It was total crap. And... Yeah. From now on, rulers will not be born. They will be chosen. On this spot are the lords and ladies of Westeros to serve the realm. don't want to. I know you don't care about power. 
But I ask you now, if we choose you, will you wear the crown? Will you lead the Seven Kingdoms to the best of your abilities from this day until your last day? Why do you think I came all this way? A lot of that, though, you know, when it comes to Game of Thrones, I honestly am going to blame HBO on that because it was a quick turnaround between seven and eight. I mean, Kurt says he ended it at season six. And I'm like, I, I think I'm still really enjoying it at that point. I mean, I'm one of those I'm yeah. one of those rare people that said you can't fault all of season eight. I was on Tinder hooks for that entire season until the last two episodes of it. The last two episodes, yes, I can understand where people are coming from that it wasn't good. Go- I, not going to say garbage. I didn't know where these twists were coming from. I didn't know the whole thing about, da- you know, I wasn't expecting Daenerys to just go full on heel, like out of nowhere. Yeah, apparently, apparently it was led up a little bit more. And uh, my husband kept telling me, nope, nope, she's she's going to be one of the crazy ones. And he's a wise no. man. <laughs> wise beyond his years. Yes. Yeah. And yes. Right. And also it was it. But, yeah, they were, like, apparently they tried to lead up to it, but they didn't do a good job, and then, like, the last season was rushed. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But, you know, all in all, and I know not only is Mike going to bring it up, I know it's on Mike's list, but a few other people brought it up, too. Uh, So we'll talk about it a little bit just to allude to that. We're breaking down some more of the stuff on Kurt's list here. All right. I still watch The Simpsons. I might be in that boat where it's just, it's a show I can't, I just can't stop watching because it's an institution. And that's what I kind of figured. I figured, you know, I stopped watching The Simpsons, oh, maybe like 10 10 years ago. Yeah. And, but it, it, it is, it's one of those shows that people cannot quit and they will always, and a lot of it, I, I think it, it, even nowadays, it gets a lot of undeserved praise. Uh, at least I think current... it gets un- undeserved praise. This 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 show continually tops lists of shows that need to stop. But it <laughs> also, but it also, yeah, but it also gets a lot of praise. I'm not saying just from like the media, like you know, cr- you know, critics, right. like fans in general. Like if you if you find a hardcore Simpsons fan, they are a hardcore fin- Simpsons fan, and will yeah. if, if if you make even the suggestion that they stop, they'll. They, you know, it's like you're asking them to kill their baby or something like that. Mm. You know? But I will say this, though, about The Simpsons. You know who loves The Simpsons right now, like current Simpsons episodes? My daughter. <laughs> My daughter loves The Simpsons. So there is still – and I'll admit, it is, it's nowhere near as great as, you know, their, their pinnacle of seasons five, six, and seven. Mm-hmm. But there are still usually a couple of solid laughs in there. Um you know, at this point, yeah, I'll be sad when it's gone, but I'm not going to be like, oh, man, it's so unfair. Fox cancels all the good shows. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, Joe, I know this one's on your list. Kirk yep. a family guy. Almost done, Stewie. Do you have an email address for our mailing list? Uh, no, thanks. I'm about to kill myself. Stop the procedure. Look, Stewie, I know I've been hard on you. But it's only because I've been struggling with my own mortality. What? But you're perfectly healthy. Stewie, I celebrated my 10th birthday this week. In dog years, I'm 70. It's all I can think about. That's the age people shrug at when they see it in an obituary. Wait, Tio, you're 70? Do you get regular peels? You look great. Uh, It's one of those things that I should have quit it as soon as Seth MacFarlane stopped writing for it in 2010. But it's like one of those. It's it's a habit. It, it really has become a habit. It's that it's that it, Sunday eight o'clock is the last thing I'm thinking about before I go to bed. And it's like, <laughs> well, I just need that little bit of relaxation before I stress out about work the next day. So it's like, oh, okay, I'll just throw the Family Guy on. Yeah, a couple I, of my coworkers still watch it. Oh God, I. You know what? You know what did it for me? I I didn't stick with it like like painfully stick with it. The episode where. 
um, Stewie beat the shit out of Brian because he owed him some money. It was a Tom Brady episode. Yeah. And that episode was the one I'm like, okay, this is not funny at all. And I just, I stopped like cold. It's like, I could have, I could have done the thing where it's like, yep, just going to keep watching until it gets better. And I just, at that point, I'm like, okay, this, I, it's officially distasteful to me now. Yeah. Even, I mean, it's, even though I still watch it, there's a, there's a, it's, it's some aspects of it are still so problematic. It's like, why am I doing this to myself? <laughs> But I just can't, like I said, it's just, it's it's a habit now. It is just, it's a habit. I can't quit it. I don't know why. Hmm. It's comforting. It's comforting in a certain, in a weird sort it's of way. It's comforting. Yeah. <laughs> it's that, well, like, like I said, it's that last, it's the last, like, vestige of the weekend. Right. You know? Right. Like, this, this is, okay, the weekend's ending. This is, like, the last thing you do on the weekend. The That's last what John weekend. Oliver's for, really. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but I can't stay up late enough. Yeah, I can't stay up that late. Yeah, no, that's 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 a Monday thing. I watch that on Monday evening, yeah. Yeah, SNL is like my Sunday night thing now. (laughs) So, um, do you have anything else to to, to talk about with uh, with Kurt's list? Hear anything more about The Walking Dead or The Simpsons or Game of Thrones or anything? Mm. We, We could do a whole episode about The Walking Dead, man. Oh my god! Oh, well, you know what? I, I I think I watched like the first season because Diane was wicked into it for a while. And yeah, it was the first season. But again, I'm one of those people that when The Walking Dead first came out, I was like, oh my god, the zombie the zombie genre is just so overdone. I don't need to watch this. So I I, I never could get into it really. I never really right. gave the show a chance. Yeah, I think. It, yep. Sorry, Mike. Zombies have never been my thing, so I've never watched a single episode of it, and I'm quite happy about that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's. You know what, you're probably doing yourself a favor by not watching it. It's, um, I mean, the thing is, is that I feel like the first three seasons really were good high drama. There's a lot of good twists that you weren't seeing coming. The whole thing at the, um, I think, was it the end of season two? It was the one where, um, oh, God, Rick reveals that they're all infected. Oh, right, right. Well, and it's just like the way he brought it up because they're just fighting. He's like, we're all infected. Yeah. Well, he learned that like at the end of the first season. Yeah. And he held it for the entire second season. Yeah. And then the the prison. I, I think season three might be the best one where they were in the prison and you got the governor. And that was that was the high point. And then from there, it's like, OK, let's just needlessly kill off people. So. Yeah, I stuck it and, out for a long time, and then it was it. It just got to the point where I'm like, I can't, I can't deal with uh, Negan going Hoo! anymore. Oh God, he seriously. Anybody who names their bat Lucille, it's like you're just asking for what's the reference to that? Is it a car? Is it something from some like douchebag greaser thing from the fifties? Please tell me. I want to know. Ugh. Ugh. All right, so. Ugh. Kurt, thank you so much. I'm glad that you weren't drawing that much of a blank. Um, so moving <laughs> on, we have a Nerd Crusade podcast at Crusade Nerd who says, Doctor Who, Jody's first season was a minefield. Have you got family? No. Lost them a long time ago. How'd you cope with that? carry them with me what they would have thought and said and done make them a part of who I am so even though they're gone from the world they're never gone from me that's the sort of thing Grace would have said so everything we saw everything we've lied to people about is this normal for you I'm just a traveler sometimes I see things need fixing do what I can. Except right now, I'm a traveler without a ship. I've stayed too long. I should get back to finding my TARDIS. Doctor! Can I just say, you really need to get out of those clothes. 
I, I, I haven't watched it. Okay, I haven't watched the Jodie Whittaker. Um, I really like Jodie Whittaker. Okay. Um, yeah, I, have, I, I, will, I will say her first season, not the strongest. Her second season, though, was fantastic. The, the okay. reboot of Doctor Who lost me during the Matt Smith years because it became the Amy Pond show. And I'm like, I'm here for the Doctor. I'm not here for Amy Pond. And I got really tired of every female companion busting after me. I'm like, this isn't the show I remember. There was sexual attention. There was an awful well, that, that was the point of uh, um, Donna. Oh, Donna was yeah. ne- Donna yeah, was more Donna, like a sister. Yeah, she was she was the obnoxious sister, and that was good. Um, but like River Song, tedious as hell, and then like the Amy Pond series part. I was like, that was when I quit. That was when I quit the new series. I was like, I give up. I, I genuinely like Clara. She and Clara came <laughs> after Amy Pond. But. Yeah, Clara. Clara seemed good. I saw a couple episodes with her, and like eventually I'll get around to it. But I'm like, yeah, it was just. Ugh. Yeah, and I, you know what? I can see the thing with Doctor Who that makes it unique is that whenever they introduce a new Doctor, it's like they're just doing a new series. So yeah. it, it it's constantly giving itself a fresh slate. Yeah. So that's that's something you can go back to and like, okay, now I'll try it again. You know, fully right. So yeah, if, if there's, yeah. If there's a certain doctor you don't like, okay, just wait it out a, a year, a couple of right. years, and then you'll see somebody new. Exactly. You know, like I wasn't the biggest Matt Smith fan, so I just waited it out until they brought in Peter Capaldi. Yeah. 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 I I need to watch the Peter Capaldi episodes, and I I do want to watch the Jodie Whittaker episodes. Uh, among other things, she she slaps in a uh, a uh, uh, oh god. I'm gonna blank on the episode, on the movie now. <laughs> the the Attack one the she block? did, Attack the Block. Yeah, she's in Attack the Block. Great movie. Okay. Great movie. That's great. Yeah, I saw that at the Sci-Fi Movie Marathon, and and I was like, when when she became the Doctor, I was like, she looks familiar, and I went and looked it up. I'm like, oh, I know this lady. It's got both uh, both Judy Whit- Jody Whitaker and um, uh, John Boyega. Yeah, yep. that was where I, I first saw John Boyer. And it has Nick Frost for all us old people. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and also the um the kid who played um half of Starfire in Legends of uh, Legends of Tomorrow is in there. Sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> Great. All right. So um moving on, we've got uh, comic book couples counseling, which is at C B C C podcast. Who uh, quote tweeted us with? Um, we can drop a TV show in the first sign of trouble, so this isn't really an issue for us. The closest we could think of was that sort of fits this concept is the X Files, although we even like those last few seasons. <laughs> Telling us to come out. Sure. Why don't you make it easy for him? Cartel owns the cops in this town. They're gonna kill us. They're gonna try. They'll kill her. Keep you long before they get tired of waiting. So we're partners, huh? How long have we been working together? Not long. But we've known each other for years. They're giving us one minute. What's the name of my son? It's weird. It's the only thing I can remember is I have a son. I can see his face, but I can't remember his name. Yeah, I'm. I'm that's I. It, it's a bold statement. There was a time when we were like, does this even matter anymore? Or are we just <laughs> watching it to see it end? I yeah, mean, quite I, honestly, the biggest slog of the X Files is the second movie. I kind of got X Files after the first movie. Like I watched it a little longer, and then I'm like, I'm out. No. Yeah, I, I still I watched the X Files from the start till I think I made it to the season that did not have David Duchovny. <laughs> and oh God, had, the um, Robert Patrick seasons. Oh yeah, God. I had Robert Patrick. <laughs> I I I, could, I don't think I made it through that season. I did 
watching the movie, but that was that was pretty much it for me. Yeah. I, I tried an episode from the Robert Patrick season because I'm like, well, I like the T-1000 and uh, uh, Lucy Lawless was showing up as an alien. So I'm like, I'll check it out. And I'm like, man, this is bad. Never mind. <laughs> Uh, all right. So, um, we've got a few other people who responded to that, uh, quote tweet. Uh, Dana Andra at Dana Andra on Twitter says the one that I can't give up despite most of its original characters leaving the show, NCIS. Which one? <laughs> yeah. That's the thing with those procedural <laughs> shows is that they have such a rotating cast, but it's always pretty much the same show. Let it's me the ask same that question. Exact does it even show. matter? Okay, no, so it does not. Me, I'll, Joe, I'll go you one further. Everything on CBS's one-hour drama uh, series, they're all the same palette. I think they use the same writers. You, It's almost impossible same, to distinguish one CBS hour-long drama from another. The same color palette and stuff like everything. Everything's the it's, same. It's all, it is all flat. My, you know, and the reason why I know my stepfather loves the shows on CBS. My stepfather is also 73 years old. Oh, that's so. It, that is, that is, that is boomer television if ever there was, was. Yeah. <laughs> and you know why? Again, it's one of those things. It's comforting. You know what you're going to oh, yeah. get. It doesn't right. expect you to, it's not stretching you the way that like, some some dramas that we watch, like Succession. Succession stretches you. It is an endurance test because it's so well written and it's just so frenzied. Versus, you know, sitting there watching friggin' Blue Bloods or NCIS or something like that and just Which watching. Follows the same template, yep, same every formula, single time. Yep. Every, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I stuck with the original CSI until until uh, Gil left. And yeah, when they went into the season with um, oh, uh, Ted Danson. Uh, no, no, before that. Oh dang! Oh, bother. Come, come it's on. okay, Mike, because you know what the thing is. We're not going to dispute you on it because chances are you're right. Even you're if probably you're right. Yeah, so we're not gonna... different show. As he was, he was a Nightmare on Street Part Three. Robert. Okay. Robert. Great. Robert England. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, he was also in Pee-wee, uh, Pee-wee's Playhouse. He was Lawrence Fishburne. Well, yeah, Lawrence Fishburne. Yes. Okay. He he was in there for a season. He replaced Dill, and it just it it didn't work for me. Oh God. Yeah, that's a show that just it just seriously just needs to be taken out somewhere and just have it like look out at the at, at the river while Gary Sinise loads a gun and into the back, you know. <laughs> Oh, his his series ended quickly, more quickly than any of them, I think. Yeah, yeah, he didn't last very long. Well, except for uh, CSI Cyber. Ooh, oh, Ooh. Jesus Christ! Yeah. All right. So um, Dana also brings up Game of Thrones was easy to drop. Well, once it became obvious that it was a torture porn, uh, was part of the supposed appeal. The Walking Dead was a planned drop after reading what happened to Glenn in the comic. Once Negan appeared, I was done. Yeah. That's, I think those are the prevailing that, thoughts on that. Yeah, that seems to be the consensus is when Negan appeared and when when everybody found out what Glenn, what happened to Glenn. Yep. Um, so then we've got Umar H. Soares, born in Brooklyn at Umar H. Soares. Ha! Which one didn't I? Lost. Oh, I, oh I that's, that's stuck a stuck yeah. it through with Lost. I powered through that one. I, I watched, oh, man. I watched I watched all of Lost, but I agree. Some of it got very tedious. A couple days ago, you asked me why I came back to the island. I need to find Claire. I thought maybe if I could catch up to you, you could help me. And then maybe if we could find her and bring her back to Aaron, then maybe all of this wouldn't have been for nothing. I'm sorry. I never should have followed you. How much time? Um, I just no. You know what? It got very tedious after the uh, 
I think maybe the second season. Oh, the second season is weird. Like we had this. So the way but it was, the, but, but it was, it was weird in a good way. And like, you didn't know it, it was like, okay, you, this, this has possibilities. Then it just went off the rails. Yep. Cause then it's like, okay, now we, we have no idea. We have no idea where we're, where, where we're taking all these at, you know, we don't know. JJ Abrams has, has an amazing way of creating concepts and no way of finishing them. No. <laughs> <laughs> it no, really is it's true though because like i wanted to like that finale i really did and i was i was just like it just became appointment television for us whether or not we liked it right and it was right. just tough to continue watching you know and then there was the episode with the uh the two the two people that nobody cared about and then they just like buried them in a ditch somewhere and just never <laughs> spoke about them again that was that was kind of funny. Oh, and and the guy that got exploded by the uh, the dynamite. Oh yeah. God. Oh yeah. Him. The East Summerlander. Yeah. Did he show up on like one of those CW shows that never got canceled because it's a CW? I have I have no idea, but I like for Lost. I'm like I understand. I totally understand anybody that quit it. I stuck it out. Um, like I got into it because of my coworkers, and I followed it, and I was like. This is fun, and I got I got through to the end, and I was like, it, it almost felt like you. Were, it, I felt obligated to watch it. It's like, okay, I'm. Uh, it's like, uh, I got this. I'm. Not, I don't have any confidence that they're gonna like work out any of these details, but I gotta watch and see what happens. Right. Like, like you said, well, Andy, he's he's great. He's great at creating concepts, not so great at following through with them. Well, quite honestly, too. I mean, you can think of Lost as probably like one of the last great pre-streaming service appointment, appointment to, television yeah. shows yeah i mean mm. it was it was ba- it was just it was just just network i mean you could still do your appointment television with stuff like the sopranos which also slogged um but yeah i think that that's really the case with lost uh umar brings up game of thrones the shield is an interesting one because i i feel like there mm-hmm. was payoff at the end of the shield, but you have to sit through two unbelievably shitty uh, <laughs> seasons before you get to the great final season. The, the the I have never been there. There's only a hand, but we can all agree on this. There's the really it's it's rare when you get a satisfying series finale, yeah. and the shield is one of them. It's heartbreaking. And you feel like a sense of justice at the end. So, mm. I don't know if any I, did anyone else besides me watched The Shield. Mm. I did not, but I, I actually know what you're referencing. Okay, and well, that's good. I, I really enjoyed, oh, God, what was that superhero show that he was on? Uh, it only lasted, like, half oh, a season. Oh, The Family. The Family. Yeah. I loved, I like, having seen all those commercials for The Shield, I loved him in that. I'm like, oh, you're stretching. Yeah. Also, he played uh, in, like, one of the Fantastic Fours. He was the thing. Yeah. The thing that he wants to be remembered for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, boom, boom. I, I I'm like, I liked seeing him, you know, after seeing all those commercials of The Shield, I liked seeing him in the family because I'm like, oh, he's the, like, he's the, like, really, you know, emotional Pinnacle, I love this. Yeah, he, he did a great job, and I like speaking of shows. I would have liked to see go on more. <laughs> I agree, actually. I I did enjoy that. Yeah, oh. that was a great show. <laughs> All right, Umar also brings up Dexter. I I've never seen an episode of Dexter, but from what I understand, it's one of those things. It just like the Shield, just like Lost. You have to see it through to the end. Even though it was just, it, it was just um, reduced de- dividends by the end of it. Well, it's not over. It's not yeah, over. Not the I know, end. Not, no, it's not. I know it's it's coming back. They, they no, it has to. They, they've already premiered the first episode of the next season. Okay. Well, I don't. And, and it filmed. Yeah. Yeah, it filmed at a uh, bull run. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, shot in this but, area too. But yeah, I I saw like an episode or two, and I like listened to a couple of audio books. I'm like, okay, I get the sense of it. I'm done. Hmm. John is okay. Enjoying it, so. Okay. 
Jonna is enjoying it. So oh, cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, he also brings up Orange is the New Black. Uh, so glad Diane Carrero is better known as Crazy Jane. I this was I, I could agree with that. Like it was more like we. What, I, I have two TVs in the house, but I always say that I have one TV in the house because one TV is down in my basement. I never watch it. Usually it's the upstairs TV, you know, in the comfy, you know, the comfort of my living room where Autumn and I can watch shows. And she loves Orange is the New Black. So I started watching it with her. Um, I don't feel like I mean, I felt like there was definitely a dip in quality, but not enough to be like, why am I doing this? And then uh, Umar closes out with, I watched every episode of uh, Adam West Batman when I was a kid. I wasn't that impressed. <laughs> Watching until the end is totally a geek thing. Lock it up good and tight, guard. The Joker's on the loose again. Don't worry about him getting in here, Batman. No, sir. Once I get these doors locked, the museum is burglar proof. No one could break into it. Come on, Rob. Ready to lock up, Mr. Hobbit? Coming. <laughs> Come, my comic cohorts in crime. <laughs> Come, Oliver. <laughs> Come, Stanley. <laughs> I I watched that when I was a kid on Channel 68, I believe. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, it. it I mean, for, when I was like, you know, ten, eleven, it was fantastic. Oh it yeah, when you're when you're a kid, you're just like, oh, holy shit, this is awesome. But now, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, why am I doing? Why would I do this to myself? Yeah. Well, I was when I was a kid. Like I when I found it, like we stumbled across it on the internet. Uh, the internet. God damn it, Channel 68. Um, <laughs> Otherwise known as the internet of uh, uh, yeah. of, of lower UHF TV. <laughs> oh, yeah, otherwise known as the New Hampshire channel that barely came in. Is that the one with Al Caprillion? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, no. <laughs> no, that's that was 50. 50. That was 50. 50. Okay. <laughs> I, I might have watched it on 56, but, like, when I caught it, I was too old to appreciate the, the just goofiness of it and too yep. young to understand camp. Ah. Yeah. So, so that was – I was like – not in a good place to appreciate it. It is really fun. I have coworkers who really love it and like share memes of, you know, share memes or just share like short clips of like Adam West running around going, there's no good place to throw a bomb as he's like trying to get rid of this bomb that's going to blow up stuff. Yeah. And like he goes over here and there's a bunch of nuns. He goes over here and there's a bunch of children. He's like, <laughs> I watched and, like, it when I was a kid, under- like when I was a really young kid, it was, I don't even know what channel it was. But that was like my introduction to Batman. Yeah, like, I do. I just remember every single episode. Like, there were each episode was like a two parter, and yeah. every every first part ended on a cliffhanger. So every time I'd watch it, I'd be like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And I'm really like, it doesn't really matter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. sucked too is that when they, when they were rerunning, they were showing them out of order. Oh. <laughs> But I remember, too, when they brought that back in 89 to capitalize oh, yeah. on the on, on Batman 89. <laughs> and it was like, I'm watching it, and I'm watching it with my mom's old boyfriend, uh, Tom. And, you know, he's waiting for me to notice it. And he's waiting for me to notice it. And I'm like, does the Joker, like, is he got makeup on over a mustache? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Tom was like, just quiet. Saw it. Yes. <laughs> oh, Cesar Romero couldn't be bothered to shave his mustache off. Yep, exactly. No, refused, refused to do he so. Refused. Apparently, there's there's a story of them going to an orgy and like they didn't realize what they were getting into, and uh, Adam West and Cesar Romero went, "We're just gonna stay in character and leave." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
All right. So let's move on here. We got John Lamont at uh, JTL2.net. I was at Supernatural. I described some of the seasons as wandering aimlessly in search of a plot, but there was something about the show I couldn't give up on. And it's not like you even really care. Because Sam's right. The apocalypse, the first go around, with Lucifer and Michael, you knew everything that was going on. So why the games, Chuck? Huh? Why don't you just snap your fingers and end it? Look, in every other bad thing we've been killing, been dying over, where were you? Have it your way. Jack! Stop it! Stop it! Jack! Hey, Chuck! Jack! I agree. I, I agree. This was, exactly. Yeah, Let's this open was one of my ultimates. <laughs> I stuck through this until, like, I haven't seen the last season or two, but I did stick with this for a very long time. Yeah, me, you and me both. It's just like, I, th- I, think, I think around season five or six, it's just like, it started to become a slog. It's like, oh, uh, why am I doing um, this? Well, see, season five was the end of Eric Kripke's vision yeah six i thought was tolerable and then they were like trying to work on it and you know and this is around the time that people were like oh you know vampire gyrus is entering that's the last of the the wb and i'm like supernatural is still around and i kept watching it for years <laughs> and probably because jared padalecki pretty as hell okay. um <laughs> and i stuck with it and i watched it and i kept watching it and then it was just like you know, when my husband, uh, my, my to-be husband moved in and, like, we watched it for a few more years and it just got more and more ridiculous. And also, the other problem was, like, the last year or two is, like, appointment watching was flipping hard. <laughs> and the, the CW's app was not great. Hmm. Yeah. So that, was, that was kind of why I fell off. And I'm like, I only have one more season to go. I will watch it eventually. Oh, um, I feel... Uh, Andy. Yeah. Uh, Vampire Diaries is the series that Ian Somerhalder went to. Oh, okay. Another one that I think um, went on too long. But, I mean, the thing with the thing that I think makes some shows more painful in terms of the quick factor is the fact that most network TV is a 23-episode run yeah. versus, you know, like, it's... It, Quite honestly, a 10-episode run of Game of Thrones, I could blow through that. That's yeah. why, like, what I, what I saw, like, even some of the Netflix MCU stuff, it's like, these are 13, these don't need to be 13 episodes. It's hard to get through all of this Iron Fist, which I never finished, so gave Neither up on I. it pretty, pretty fucking quick. I didn't even bother with the second season. I made it through the first season. Have not watched the second season. I did the second. I did the first season. I got through that. Um, but yeah. All right. So we've got Jeff at J Rivers, nineteen eighty four, who says I dropped the last season of Once Upon a Time since it completed everything in season six, and honestly, some drop plots in the series left uh, me annoyed. Mm. Fair that I, I completely like. I watched uh, Once Upon a Time absolutely voraciously for seasons and then eventually I quit and to the point where I'd forgotten it existed. Thank you for reminding me. Cause no, I, <laughs> I, made it the four, for sure. I made it through the first four seasons of that one before I kind of drifted away. I, but I didn't really, I didn't find it a chore to get through. I, I did enjoy it. Yeah. I, I'm going to have to go back to it. I, I enjoyed it. And then it just got, I was like, at some point, I got tired of it. I'm like, this is the, we're, <laughs> we're we're pushing my limits. This is tedious. But yeah, I think in the, season six, pretty much the entire cast left, and they get swiped and swept it out. 
yet. But but it was it was definitely enjoyable for the years that I watched it, and then I hmm. gave up on it. Yeah. <laughs> so all right, so then we've got um, Knights of the Living podcast at Night of the LP, who brings up True Blood. The fuck are you thinking, Sookie? Don't answer me, do not. Just fucking talk, all right? Swallow any blood? What about your eyes? You getting in your eyes? Just shake your head, yes or no. Fuck! Help me wash her off in the river. I'm on it. You. What the fuck are you thinking, huh? Tell me I ain't good enough to protect her, and you are, and this is what you come up with? It was her idea, Alcee. I've known her long enough not to try and change her mind. Yeah, go on. Tell me about Sookie like I don't know her. And I swear to God, I will fucking kill you. Lucy! Andy, behind the tree! One of us could turn him for you, but we would have to do it. No. You sure, sir? I've been down that road before. Just went off the rails after season three, but I held out hope that it captured the magic again. It didn't. (laughs) All right. And I I will go on record and say, anybody who brings up the, the series finale of Game of Thrones, might I direct the court? To the series finale of True Blood, I have never wanted to throw a heavy object at my television more. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's like we were watching. Autumn and I watched it, and I felt deflated that I rushed back from a cookout to watch it with her. And it's oh. just like that's it. That is that. that that's it. Yeah, I um, I made it through the first two, maybe two and a half seasons of True Blood, and then I just I dropped. But thing is, I did buy every single season on Blu-ray. I ah. still got it, looking at them right now, and I, I just I've never gotten around to watching any of the last four seasons because I I don't really care anymore. It's they just <laughs> they, their their issue was they introduced far too many characters far too late. Into the into the run to make it worth anything. Yeah, and a lot of the characters they introduced in the beginning were really not that likable. Yeah. So, all right. Um, so then we've got Hostile Environment Podcast at uh, podcast underscore Hostile brings up Lost because we're going to be bringing up Lost. Totally Buzz at Totally Buzz UK. Brings up Pretty Little Liars. I wanted to quit, but I couldn't. I had to see it through. Uh, my brain is numb from all those cop questions. I don't think I'd be here if it wasn't for A. He killed Ian to keep you here. I'm sorry, but that is not a comforting thought. A gives so she can take. We know that. So what's the bitch going to ask for? Whatever it is, I don't think we can afford it. Spence, you didn't... You didn't see anything? I saw a black hoodie, black boots, and clubs. Well, I think it's safe to say that A's not Jenna. Are we sure? A sees everything, Hannah. I'm starting to think we should tell someone about her. Him. It, 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 what's the worst thing that can happen? A knows all of our secrets. Yeah, if people find out, we'll always be those girls who blinded Jenna Marshall. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All I caps. Uh, yeah, it's uh, more power to you. I watched, I, I, I watched a couple seasons of that, and then, like, again, it was one of those, it's too hard to figure out how to watch it, and I stopped caring. And I, <laughs> I, did, I did read, like, the, the write-ups in Entertainment Weekly about how it ended, and I was like, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it was... It's tough. I, I, I didn't watch any of it because, you know, it held no interest to in me. But I do understand. Um, I do understand. It's like 
there was a through plot where you were going to be promised. That's right. It's like it's like sticking with Twin Peaks to the end of season two, even though they revealed who killed Laura Palmer four episodes into the into the beginning of season two. <laughs> There's still ten episodes left. What the hell? <laughs> So we've also got uh, JVD at Villains Demand, who brings up Terminator, the Sarah Con- Connor Chronicles. There are those who believe that a child shares his mother's hopes for his future. But what if you'd known what his life held for him? That his fate was tied to the fate of millions. That every moment of your life will be spent keeping him alive. I can't keep doing this. I'm not who they think I am. It's going to be a goddamn dogfight. Run, run! Oh my god, I I tried that. Uh, yeah, I, I made it about two episodes in. <laughs> I I didn't make it past the first three episodes. Yeah, I I th- I watched the premiere and I'm like, all right, I'm done already. And a lot of it just has to be. Um, a lot of it ju- is just because the entire premise post T two is stupid. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't make any. It doesn't matter what you do. The future is what to make of it. it. It's stupid. The whole the whole premise of anything continuing after T two is dumb. Yeah. Um. So then we get Jesse B at uh, J Biss. Who brings up Friday Night Lights? Uh, last couple of seasons were bad, but I couldn't give up on Coach Taylor. We can either win together or we can lose alone. Clear eyes, full heart. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize it ran for more than two seasons. I want to say that was on for like five. Wow. I, I, I never watched a frame of it because it's just not my thing. Yeah. But. Um, then we got JD Olivia at JD underscore Olivia, who brings up Smallville. I yeah, want from yeah, season that's... until the season finale. I ask you to remember one thing. Your abilities may be of my blood, but it is your time in Smallville with Jonathan and Martha Kent and all the people there that made you a hero, Colin. Always hold on to Smallville. I watched. I watched from pilot to the end. I watched through season seven, and then I just i i, I just couldn't do it anymore. I I watched it all, and I don't regret a minute of it. Oh, good. So there was a satisfied customer then. I, I think there I still have the last three seasons on, on DVD or Blu-ray, though. There was at what least one you buying these things. If you're just going to watch them, why did we buy them? <laughs> Because I'm OCD and I have I want to have a cool, full collection. Okay, okay, that's fair. That's fair. It's not, but it's <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I I I can understand it. There were some painful times and oh, the lawsuits, um, but <laughs> oh yeah, Chloe, Chloe turned to, has been a great disappointment in the uh, yes. post times, but oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me ask you guys, how do you feel about sex cults? <laughs> <laughs> you know who won't brand you into a sex cult? <laughs> um, the, oh, it's the, good, the, uh, the goods and services uh, that support, <laughs> that support this no, podcast. fuck those goods. We're talking about the products and services. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, goods, goods are no good. But yeah, no, Lois Lane won't do, do you wrong. Watch out for Chloe. Yeah. <laughs> God. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I did uh, enjoy. I, I, you know, I was really sad when Jared Padalecki left. Uh, oh God! No, no, no. He left Smallville and went on to Supernatural, which is why yeah. I got stuck into that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I, I stuck through all of Smallville for the, all ten years. Yeah. God bless you. Was on there for I want to say the fifth, fourth, or fifth season. I. I don't know. I watched maybe the first episode of it. Yeah, I, I watched like the first season. I was just like, eh, okay. Actually, the first season is one of the weakest. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, yeah. The, well, the, I mean, the thing that turned me off was the whole, you know, no cape, you know, no cape, no flight thing. Yep. I'm like, well, okay. Well, why would I want to watch a show about Superman where he's not flying or anything? Because that's how he was in the original comic books. He only jumped big. Yeah. God. Flash yeah, forward I, I, ten. I, you, flash you forward to ten years me? later. Catherine. Um, <laughs> totally. I am totally gonna do that. You are mansplaining Superman to me. Holy shit. <laughs> You're the one that's like, no, no, she's not mansplaining. She's um actuallying you. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> I you know Yeah. Well you know the funny thing is too is that you flash forward like fifteen years later, you know, fifteen, twenty years later, and all of a sudden it's like all the Snyder boys just want to turn Superman evil. <laughs> and I blame it all on Smallville. Well, hey, he did turn into in the second season. Also, of course. Season, yeah. of also, course. also, the relationship between uh, him and Lex Luthor in the series was really great. Yeah. Okay. The, the, the actors performed it really great. It was fun. Yeah. So, all right. Well, let's let's move on then. Um to Mr. J at Mr. J N O S O brings up freaking Dexter picks me off so bad. I'm not interested in new blood. Makes sense. That's what I've heard from a lot of people. Um, what else do we have here? We we've got more. I'm just trying to figure this out as I'm scrolling through the, because of the the re, like the, the quote tweets, I actually had to go through like all of my notifications for this. So, all right, we've got Camille Hostetter at uh, It's Camille, uh, with that, which is Camille H. Buffy, Heroes, and Criminal Minds are a few that I held on to for dear life. Um, so, Camille, <laughs> I can – always... All right. Camille, Buffy, I can I commiserate with, with, with Heroes. I can totally commiserate with Heroes because it was like a divorce when I finally was like, please just let this series end. Oh my god! It I, went I, on for so far. Much. Three seasons was too much. I I was so devoted to Heroes. Not only did like I watch it, I actually like got all the comics because they had comics that they did online that mm-hmm. you could download and read, and it actually gave background to the characters, which did influence my perception of the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, eventually, and and so there were things that I picked up that, like, if you didn't read the comics, you don't get this little five second scene. And it was fun. And all right, Zack yeah, Snyder, yeah. whatever. Yeah, no. <laughs> and eventually, it got tedious and and bad. Like after season two. Yeah. So it, I'm not I'm not a Buffy fan. I've made that patently clear. Was this one for for you Buffy guys that was like there there was that point where you're like am I just doing this until it ends? Um I don't think so. Uh, not too bad though. Like I mean, there I, a couple I just, seasons I were... Go, Go ahead. ahead. <laughs> uh uh well I cared too much about the uh, ancillary characters. Mhm. Like you know, as much as I, you know, I watched the show, Buffy mattered less than Willow and Xander. And so the season that, the season finale featured Willow and Xander was amazing. Okay. Great writing. And, and like, you know, yeah, Buffy can beat the shit out of everything she wants, but what uh, Willow needs is her best childhood friend to talk her out of destroying the universe. Right. And, like, that was moving, and then it kind of went downhill from there, but I, I stuck it out through the rest of the seasons. I've seen the comic books. I haven't really paid a lot of attention. Yeah, there, w- there wasn't really, I mean, there were a couple of, like, weaker seasons, but I don't think there was ever really a a significant enough drop, of qual- drop in quality that it really kind of totally turned me off the series. Yeah, okay. and, and and you know, like you'd have a weak season, but they'd have some strong episodes in there. Yes, right. Where there was like, you know, and it was part of like you were saying, you know, you have to have twenty two episodes for American television. It's like if they only had to do ten, 
they could have scaled it back to just the important stuff. Right. Well, right. I mean, like the first and, season had only thirteen episodes. Yeah, it was a, it was a it was a season filler. It was a half season filler. Yeah. And it's like, if you if you didn't have to pad the story, it would have been stronger. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And in terms of Criminal Minds, see also everything we talked about with every CBS show. And again, John really enjoys a lot of those. Okay. <laughs> every every procedural ever, yep. Right. Well, you know, John does live with her elder mother. Yeah. So that might be part of it. Um, mother loves Jeopardy. Okay. <laughs> no. You can't not give you know you can't give up on Jeopardy. It's a new episode every time. <laughs> All right. So our buddy Dave McLean at McLean Dave says, "I have seen every episode of Scrubs." Medicine is. Well, it's a dead career. Thanks to insurance companies and malpractice lawyers, you have absolutely no hope of finding a rewarding or satisfying profession in this once noble field. The only exception to this very true rule is the following. If you are lucky enough to go to a great medical school, then my children, you got a real shot. You poor bastard. I Dude, gave up on ow. this. I, I gave up on Scrubs hard uh, for no reason, honestly. It wasn't a dip in quality or anything. It was just like, just stop caring. Yeah. But I, I it's that's saying something because when they brought in like all the, the new, like the new interns and stuff, it was just like, and by that point, Zach Braff was insufferable. Garden State had just come out and I'm just like, all right, no, no, I'm done. Yeah, I can't, I can't see you anymore. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, you're creepy. No. All right, so then we've got uh, the Bricked Pit podcast at Bricked Pit, who says, Red Dwarf got squirrely around season seven. The comeback on Dave TV has been stellar. Holly, when is this? Where am I? It's Monday, and you're in a corridor. <laughs> Anything else I can help you with? Are you still senile? I've never been senile. I was a dancing cabbage for a while. But I'm over that now. Turned out it was some corrupted files. Um, well, actually, Red Dwarf was on my list. Um, oh. Yeah, I, I've got... Oh, I've got seasons one through eight on DVD. I'm looking at them right now. Uh, season one through... Four and five are some of the best TV ever. Uh, six, it's got some still good quality episodes, but it's starting to run off the rails a little bit. Uh, seven and eight, it it really starts t- taking a dip, and yeah, and then they get to an episode where actually they bring back Red Dwarf with all the original crew, and that's when I I just I I fell off. Okay. It, it just it. it the jokes weren't landing as much as I thought I was hoping they would. Save me a kipper. I'll be back in the morning. <laughs> I'll be back for breakfast. <laughs> I still love that line, though. <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen that, but that one was great. <laughs> okay, kipper. I'll be back for breakfast. Nice. Nice. <laughs> it's just a show that I... I, I it's like you. I missed the, the, the getting off point or the getting on point for it. Well, the getting on point is episode one. Yeah, I understand that, but it's just like <laughs> the end. It, it's yeah. like when when people are recommending Arrow to me, and they're recommending it to me after season three, and again, just like any other network TV, it's like that's a lot of TV I need to watch. I'm yeah. just not going to watch any of it then. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, Arrow, Arrow is another one where uh, it's it, it's not on my list, but. Well, you can say that of any modern CW show. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I stuck around. I stuck through Arrow and The Flash to about the same time on both of them. Yeah. Well, spoilers, Mike. Spoilers. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, the CW was like the Smallville did good. Let us more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and those I'll exact say- words too. Arrow is started really, really strong, amazingly strong, and yeah. same thing with the Flash. And 
All right. Well, you know what? Why don't we just do and thank you, everyone, um, for the social media feedback. We really appreciate that. We will be paying you back in um, mentions when we, we launch the episode. But, Mike, you brought up The Flash, and that is actually on my list. Radiation he's emitting is too hot to allow you to self-heal. Yeah, thanks for the heads up. What am I supposed to do? How do I stop him? I can't stop this! Oh, damn. We need to cool him down. Killer Frost. Great. Well, just go, turn! Well, that's not how it works. I can't just snap my fingers and make her appear. It only happens when I'm scared or angry. Oh, good lord. Caitlin, the city's about to explode. Everyone, everything you know and love. The birds, the trees, the fish, the puppies. Puppies are going down because you didn't want to show up for work. I it. gave... I, yes, it is, oh, yes, actually. It is. <laughs> I, um... I I really tried. I wanted so <laughs> hard to like this show. I was done about halfway through, through season two, and I stuck it out. I think until season four. Yeah. yeah. The constant. All right, who's your villain? Oh, it's another speedster. Oh, here's the time force. And then you add in the friendship is magic aspect of everything. <laughs> And I was just like, I'm fucking done. Can we please stop this, like, okay, here's the Flash, and here's his his crew, his pit crew of people who are also blessed with abilities now. Because, God forbid, anybody be a normal human being. Well, I mean, they, they were normal human beings, and then they eventually gained powers. You have a cellular <laughs> Now, for- for, yeah, for me, it was like when 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 you could kind of set your watch to the flash scenes where, hey, he he starts off, oh, he's met so another speedster who's faster than him, and then by the end of the scene, by the end of the season, hey, now I'm faster than you and I beat you, and then season two, rinse rather than repeat, season three, rinse rinse rather than repeat. Yep, and it's just it's one of those things that because it's a seed, I, I feel like we're spending a lot of time shitting on the CW, but. Maybe they deserve it because they do deserve they it though. They will not if if they can get it through the first five episodes, they're never pulling the fucking plug on it. And but that's the problem is the is the is like in each of the shows we mentioned, Smallville aside, because I didn't like the first season. <laughs> they, the, they're for, like the first season or two are are great seasons, but then it just goes off the rails. Right, you know now I it, and it's funny because that having been burned by DCW before, I'm not giving Superman and Lois a, a, a shot because I'm scared that it's going to do the same thing. Yeah. And I've heard amazing things about it, but again, it's the same thing. Like I went through, I think the first half of Supergirl and decided I I just can't, I just can't break, I can't put myself through the same thing I did with the Flash. Right. And I, I think I love I, Melissa Benoist. I really do. I think she's yeah. fantastic in it. I but agree. everybody around her sucks. Mm, I, I like I like her sister. I've actually been a fan of um the actress that played her sister since she was in that's eighty show. Oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no, I think I think part of it is like, you know, for most of what they do on the CW, they are they have a very specific, very focused uh, target audience, and we are not it. Nope. Nope. We are far too old. For some of us, it's our children who are technically that audience now. Exactly. So See, I, I, I loved Arrow, but I, I thought it should have only lasted five years because you know, each episode was kind of a combination of present day and flashback, and he was on the, the island for five years, so flashback should have only lasted five years, and then it ran for seven seasons. I'm like, whoa, where did the extra two years come from? Well, well, talking back to uh, uh, The Simpsons, how old is Bart? Right. Well, He's you know that list? Puberty. Well, the thing with The Simpsons are they have made jokes about that since the fifth season. 
that nobody gets older. And it's it actually is like it takes an act of Congress to make something change. Like those five seasons where Barney was sober, you know, <laughs> it's. But all right. So let's let's look at some of the stuff on our list. So we mentioned earlier um, our, our host, Mike C, could not make it. Uh, but he mentioned X Men the animated series. He also mentioned All in the Family, and that's one that's like, I, I don't. Rem- I know that his parents are huge into were huge into the '70s sitcoms, but I, I can imagine that after Edith died, it's like, okay, am I just watching this now to see if he just drops dead or what's what's going on? And then uh, Mike's uh, fiance Hillary brings up Grey's Anatomy, which I think if you're still watching Grey's Anatomy right now, you're you're in it to win it. Wait, is it still on? <laughs> it's just it's still it is still on. I know people who still watch it religiously for no other reason than it has just become habit. Yeah. Is it like Doctor Sexy? I don't even know if Dr. Sexy or whatever his name is, you know, Dr. Hot Dick or whatever, is still on this show because I don't know if anybody leaves this show. If it's like the CBS stuff where people just leave for one reason or another and then they replace him with another aging actor. I, I don't know. I don't know. So we get a few to uh, close out the show with. Who wants, to, who wants to start us on some of the stuff we haven't talked about that was on your lists? I mean, I'll, I'll start on all I'll right. go with the go entire reason why we're why I suggested this show in the, this episode in the first place, and that's because of the Titans. Oh my God, Mike! Fuck that show. No, Bruce. No, Bruce. No, Bruce, wake up, man. I saw Bruce's future, Jason. Hey, what the fuck did you do, Dick? Batman was going to break. Kill the Joker. Take down Gotham with him. He trained you too well, Jason. You could break just like him. You need to be put down too. Fuck that show so god damn oh, no. hard. <laughs> You're not even in the worst part of it. No, I'm not. I'm four like, episodes the, in. Yeah, the first half the first season is not good. It, it it tries so hard to be edgy that it just fails miserably at storytelling. Um, but once you get past that, like the second half of first season isn't too too bad. The problem is this show just reeks of being written one season at a time. Yep. By different writers each season, because they'll bring up a plot point in one season that completely gets uh, negated and ignored in all later seasons. They'll bring up characters that you never see again. You know, they, they seem to start a plot line and then they just toss it out and just ignore it. Um, and they, you know, they, they spend entire episodes building up to a single plot point that's like going to be so big. And then they completely negate that plot point in half an hour. Oh, it, God. I mean, the, the writing on this, in this series is stupid. So mind blowingly stupid, but. There's something about like, there's something about the char- some of the characters that I I like. I mean, like Starfire, I I genuinely like her character. I did. And she she was actually the one I was most worried about. We've seen all the trailers, and yeah. I saw saw the show. And I'm, I really like her. Um, and I mean, you know, like uh, Robin slash Nightwing. I, yeah, I like him, even though it's like this, they do so many. St- Stupid things with this character. Uh, <laughs> I I don't know why I like the show. I, I still haven't watched like the last three episodes of the latest, the latest season, but yeah. they're they're signed for a fourth season. So oh, I I don't know why because I, like I said, the writing is just so stupid. <gasps> but it's still around, and I'm still watching it, and I don't oh. know why. It's, you know, I can see why, you know, the thing is with that show, Mike, because I just started watching it pretty much in service of this episode. And it was like, I can watch another episode. I can watch another episode. And I'm like, why? Why? 
I've done nothing but text Mike <laughs> complaining about this show and just how dumb it is. They introduced a character that you think is going to be a pinnacle character that they kill in the second episode. They ruined Doom Patrol, which is a show that I love. Well, I mean, technically, they started Doom Patrol. They started Doom Patrol. But even still, it's like, if I had seen that first, I would have zero Mm. interest in Doom Patrol because of how they portrayed them. Um, Yeah, I mean, they spent the entire first season, like, like this, this team just seems to be coming together. And then it reveals they reveal in the first episode of the second season that oh wait no no there, there was a Titans before this that they've just never mentioned or never even brought up before. Oh god! You know what? And the the thing with the show is too, and this is what drives me nuts about it is because we are so established with the Teen Titans cartoons. You know, mm. re- regardless of which one you want to go with, I you know, and I, I've made no secret that I love Teen Titans Go. I think Teen Titans Go is fantastic. I wish that we can consider Teen Titans Go to the movies an official part of the DCEU because it would easily be the best thing they ever did. (laughs) (laughs) But at at the same time, I do remember back to the old 80s days of the Marv Wolfman, HB, you know, the the Teen Titans. And at this point now, it's like, when do you guys start fucking? Because that's the next thing. So maybe that's in the back of our minds. We're just waiting for the fucking to start. Andy, Andy, I mean, it's there's always been even back in the Marvel Wolfman days, there's always been a thing between Starfire and and Nightwing and Dick. Yeah, that was the cornerstone of a lot of those comics. Right. I think my issue with with Titans is. It's, again, it plays off way, way too much off the Snyder template where everything is just, everybody's broken for no reason. Yep. You know, and it's like, you know, Batman is, you know, you know, as much as I love the actor who plays Batman, it, you know, make Batman a broken old guy, you know, basically. He's not a good fit for Batman. Oh, Ian Glenn? Ian Glenn. No, and make it. You know, and 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 basically, he's ba- he should he's Bruce Wayne from Batman Beyond. Yeah, what it yeah, is. I, I, you know, you see Batman a few times in the first season. Starting mm-hmm. season two, you ne- you see a lot of Bruce Wayne. You don't see a bit of Batman again. Right. Oh, Colin and, Gotham, another show that like, why am I watching this? <laughs> it's like, well, it's like one of those things. Like, okay, w- where's Superman in all this? I mean, we know there's Superman because there's a Connor Kent. Yep. But, you know, it's like, you know, Superman was supposed to be this, this world is so bleak that Superman must be nowhere to be found. He must be just like, <laughs> just hold up Same in a bar. Wonder Woman. Joe, he's the big bad. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? It would not surprise me if that's what they did. <laughs> it we did know it. there's a it Wonder Woman. Evil. Well. We know there's a Wonder Woman because there's one girl. But yep. we have never there's, seen. Yeah, right, there's Donna Troy, so yep. it, you know a lot, a, a lot of what makes the Teen Titans comic book series great was that you had all these sidekicks to the main heroes making their own, trying to make their own way, trying right. to get from the under the shadow of the name heroes, but still kind of leaning on them as mentors. You know, not have everybody have daddy issues. Oh, Jesus Christ. What, what actually hurts me more about Titans, though, is that, uh, like, when I was in the middle of rewatching, of watching the second season for the first time, mm-hmm. I got, I finally decided to start watching through Young Justice for the first time. And Young Justice is doing everything that Titans is trying to do, but they're doing it right. They do it better, and they do it better. Oh, they're doing it. I'm, I'm, I just finished up the third season. I'm waiting for the fourth season to accumulate a few more episodes before I get into it. But it is so good. And, the, and, the, and, and the, you know, the thing with teens, and, and I don't know why I'm still, I, you know, I started watching Titans, and I don't know why I'm sticking with it, because they yeah. did, they're, <laughs> they're doing Jason Todd dirty. They really are. I mean, no, I haven't Todd's gotten that my far favorite, yet. But, yeah, yeah. yeah he's, he's made him, well, they've made him so completely irredeemable. Yeah. That's like... 
which is not the Jason Todd from the comics. I mean, yeah, Jason Todd in the comic books is an asshole. Yeah. And he he is he is always at odds with Batman and Dick and you know and Damien, but at the end of the day, he's still trying to do what's right. He just has a you know very different opinion of how it should be done. Mm. This guy is not. There's no redeeming quality to this. Yeah. Guy. Plus, plus he looks way too young to be having sex, and he does. <laughs> but he's older than six. <laughs> it doesn't. He doesn't uh, look like it, but he is. Yeah. You know, I, my joke was sick as fuck. Is let everybody know <laughs> that joke was yeah. sick as fuck. <laughs> yeah. I just, you know, just for for me watching it, it's just been this. There's just so much. Like I can see the thing is, first of all, the show looks good. It's got a, a lot of money behind it. You, mm. you can tell it's got a lot of money behind it, but my God, they're trying too hard. That just like the, that dubstep like theme that they use is just why, why, why is this what you chose? And a lot of it is because <laughs> you know you got to show that dark and gritty and broken thing. It's just, it's just. Uh, every well, everybody's trying to be an edge lord these days, and it's just like, uh, yep. Yeah. Ed- edgy works, right? Yeah, okay. It, it works in focus groups. Yeah, right? No. And again, if no, you go back supposed- and you watch, go watch the Doom Patrol. Doom Patrol is delightful. Right. And the, and that subject matter, Doom Patrol, is a lot darker. But then yeah. it's like, okay. Mm. Uh. Mm. But. Okay. Uh, I- Move on from this, but oh my god! I'm glad we all got our Titans uh, feelings out of the way here. <sighs> Thank you, Mike. Uh, <laughs> Catherine, it's one of the shows on yours that you had a hard time quitting. Babylon Five. Put me on with him. And give me firing control. This is the White Star Fleet. Negative on surrender. We will not stand down. Who is? It? Identify yourself. Who am I? I am Susan Ivanova, commander, daughter of Andre and Sophie Ivanov. I am the right hand of vengeance and the boot that is going to kick your sorry ass all the way back to Earth, sweetheart. I am death incarnate and the last living thing that you are ever going to see. I never watched a second of this, so you guys just just talk. I, I only made it through the first season. I never watched more than that. Yeah, what? same here. God. Okay, so you, you only watched the first season. The first season of the original Babylon 5, uh, they're getting rebooted. Uh, the original season of Babylon 5 was terrible. Um, if, like, if you want to get into it, start with season two. You can eventually watch season one to get some context, but uh, don't don't watch season one and to get a flavor for it. Uh, but like uh, Michael J. Straczynski had a five season vision, and after season three, he was told, "Oh no no no, you're you're getting cut off. You have one more one more season to go." So he's like, "Okay, I'm going to cram." All of my my season one, my season four and season five into one season, and then another station was like, "We'll pick you up." And he's like, "Uh, uh, uh, uh I have to write another episode then." <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, and it was like it it filtered into his storyline, but he hadn't actually thought about writing it, and most of it involved telepaths. And we're talking about the '90s and the actors they could afford, so <laughs> mostly telepaths squinted, and it was dreadful. There were like, there were a handful of characters that we cared about, and it didn't go well. Mm. But but like the characters we cared about 
they did have storylines in the last season, but it, it was sort of like jammed in there. Okay. But yeah, I, I got introduced to it and then I was faithful and I watched the rest of it and I have shared it and yeah, it's the acting, the acting is painful. <laughs> and I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, Michael J. Straczynski getting to give it another go. But they're rebooting it? Yeah. They are, re- they are rebooting it, and uh, we live in a modern age where we expect more from our actors than, like, serial commercials. <laughs> well, some of us do. <laughs> so, I'm ready to give it another try. But, yeah, Babylon 5. Okay. I appreciate it. But the last, the, 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 the final season of the original series was very painful. Oof. Joe, what do you got on your list that hasn't been discussed already? Archer. And that's what would have happened if you had hired Cloud B Marketing. Hi! But you didn't, so it didn't. Which is why you're broke. No judgment! Really? Because I judge it. Said our largest expense. Hey, alcohol is a group expense. Seems like we should have cut alcohol before our health plan. Eh, vodka disinfects cuts. Well, I miss my dark science budget. What the hell is dark science? It's basically science. But darker. I'm sad the wall art's gone. It riled my loins. What doesn't rile your loins? Enough! We're not here to waste time or prison toilet stotch. We're here because these ranting buffoons think they can solve our problems. One of her better introductions. Real talk, the espionage climate has changed. Your old spy model just doesn't work. Hello, dinosaur. Meet asteroid. But that's where we come in. Hello, dinosaur. Meet marketing. Are they... And it pains me to say this because yeah, that was one of those shows that I absolutely loved. But this new season with Archer coming out of the, the yeah. coma, it's a it's a slog. It's like, especially knowing that um, uh, Jessica, uh, Just, uh, yeah, Jessica Walter, Jessica Walter passed away, yeah. and they're like using recycled lines to do oh, her. God. Face- like they did with Chef on South Park. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, the thing with Chef on South Park is that they did that on a purpose and yeah. they did it for comedic for effect. Yeah. No. Oh, that's hard. Well, no, it's, 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 it's well done. It's like you don't know, but they, you know, it's like, okay. And, you know, when, when Archer was in this coma, it was, they had so many opportunities to be creative and they did. They took, they took the show to like weird, you know, different new weird places. But now it's like, okay, well, now what? Yeah. Doing? And it, 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 you can tell they're struggling to find stories to tell. I, you know, honestly, Joe, I stopped watching it <laughs> once they started moving away from, like, I like the season that they did where they were kind of like doing the Miami Vice thing after ISIS had really yeah. shut down. But after that, it was just like, ah, uh, I don't think I can do this anymore. Yeah, it's 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 one of those things. Like, okay, you, I, I, you kind of watch it because you, I enjoyed the one liners and stuff like that, and the interactions yeah. between the characters. But the story themselves is like they're, they're not fun stories. It's just like it's a lot of the magic is like really kind of gone. Right, exactly. Because most of the fun stuff, ha- I mean, there's only so much you can go with how disgusting Pam is, and you know. right, we we yeah, we we know Pam is an oversexed pig, so it's like okay, right, right, right. Uh, it's like okay, we know Doctor Krieger is you know is is a you should should have his own episode of Behind the Bastards, kind of right, thing. okay, exactly. Oh, geez. <laughs> but, but, you know, we got a great line from him, though. You know, stop, my penis can only get that erect, you know, so erect. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I know. It, it was it was, it was, was one of those things where, like, I think for me the re- main reason why I gave it up was there was an issue with my DVR not recording them. And it was just like, okay, I'm fine. Yeah, it's like, okay, I don't need to watch it then. I'm yeah. Good. So, all right. So on my list, I have one left on here. And that is Outlander. You 
have no place in the working of this court. I swore an oath before the altar of God to protect this woman. And if you tell me you consider your authority to be greater than that of the Almighty, then I must inform you that I am not of that opinion myself. The first man forward will be the first man down. And the main reason why I haven't given this up yet, because as you know, I mentioned earlier, my wife and I do watch a lot of shows together. And um, as long as she continues to watch this, I think I will be continuing to watch it as well. Uh, but my God, I think the showrunners have mistaken that constantly putting your main characters through tr- like the worst trauma is a great replacement for actual character development. Trauma porn. It literally is. I mean, in in, in, in the course of this series, um, every main character, uh, there are four primary main characters. Three of the four have been raped at some oh, point. Um, you know, and it's done primarily just to motivate another character to do something or to, you know, Let's be good. more aggressive about something. That's safe. That's good. I'm cool with that. But it's like that is their that is their default. That is just their default to keep you like sad and wondering if somebody actually survived something or not. Not, Did anyone actually read any of the? You know, I'm mainly looking at Catherine here. Did you read any of the books? I have the Outlander books or. I have not read the books. I have not watched the show, but my stepmother, uh, hi, Sharon, uh, she watched the show and she expressed pretty much the same opinion you did. You did. That's like, oh, there's a uh, rape trauma again. Here we go. Yep. That is, that is our one setting. Yeah. It's like, oh. we, d- we don't care what gender you are or how you identify. We're just going to like, torture you and then that's your character building have fun right right but you know it's there's just a lot about it where i'm just like i i just wish the show would just not be like they just forget to start producing more episodes of it i really think that's the only way to stop watching this show (laughs) so um Mike, what else, do you have anything left on your list? Yeah, I got one more left, and it's, are you being served? Me? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to show a bit of leg, dear. Yep. Looking through here, it's just like a scene from Dallas. <laughs> what about me, Mr. Grace? You promised you'd put me in it. That was a different conversation altogether. <laughs> uh, I love Are You Being Served? But it ran for 10 seasons, and if you watch like, the last like three or four seasons, you can tell they were just they were just going, all right, what can we have them go through now? Uh, the store's being robbed, okay, and, and they're, they're being held hostage, okay, yeah, let's go with that. Uh, and they, they just go with like these just really weird plots, and it just, it really kind of falls off the rails a little bit. It's still enjoyable to some degree, but it's not nearly as funny as the first few several seasons. And then not only that, but after the 10 seasons, they and, they, and then they ended, they did a sequel series called, uh, if you're in England, they called it Grace and Favor. If you're in America, they called it Are You Being Served Again? And that ran <laughs> for two seasons. And it was pretty much most of the original cast were then sent out to the English countryside to run like a bed and breakfast. And Jeez. where I'm not really sure why and they started like they they reused a lot of the you know they, they there were many jokes about um Mrs. Slocum's pussy cat and um you know Mr. Humphreys is he gay or not he has to sleep in sleep in a bed, share a bed with a uh, young buxom woman but no. nothing ever happens because he may be gay or not. You never know. <laughs> I, but it's just like there, there, there's still some enjoyment to be had. But it's, it's like if you really want to watch the best of already being served, watch like the first like 
five, maybe six seasons at most. And then eh, you can keep going if you want, but they're not as good. Right. Yeah, I just, it was a show I can never get into because it was just like, it just in terms of like the shelving of, of British comedy, it was just, just not something that really appealed to me because I, I always had Blackadder or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, Blackadder, I mean, four seasons, and every single one of them is a gem, so. Yes. Also, also, uh, uh, working retail is a little too close to home. Yeah, that, too. Yeah, yeah. That Actually, that, 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 I used to work that, in a department store. That might have made me enjoy it a little bit more than I than most people would have. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, all right, so. Catherine, why don't you close this out? I think you're the only one here who doesn't have you, – you've got, like, one left on your list. So have we talked about Mad Men? We have not talked about no, Mad Men, I, and I'm, I'm, I might have to disagree with you on this, but continue. I remember clearly that Cutler said the leave of absence was to give him time to think. I didn't want any more rancor. Is that what you thought, that we fired him? Not necessarily, but I did expect to revisit the topic after some time. As a group. Well, here we are. Let's take a vote. I'll speak for Ted. And I'll speak for Pete. All I can say is that Don is a very talented man. But how does he fit into everything now? This is working. Besides, we're still mopping up the damage he's done. I do not like the way this agency is spoken of out there. You don't think that's because our creative is invisible right now? One nomination. Lou didn't put in anything he couldn't tag his name on. He barely worked here last year. Lou was adequate. I think it's more important we discuss Harry Crane. Harry Crane? He's gone. Anything else? This agency is too dependent on creative personalities. You're still talking for Ted? If we want people speaking about this agency, what they should be speaking about is our media department. We need to invest in a computer. Uh, I hung out until I have not watched the last season. I'm going to get to it eventually, but there was a point at which it was like, I don't care enough anymore. Yeah, there's only there's only so much of watching Don be a man whore that's just like, yeah, yeah. okay. You know? And, and, and the thing is, like, every time you're waiting for him to get caught, he gets caught or faces no serious consequences. Right. In fact, yeah. there is actually a scene where he is treated to a threesome because of it. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And, and, like, somebody was like, give me the full dawn. And it's like, what? And, like, yeah, the woman who's like, I want the full experience. I've been heard about you. And he's like, gets mad and leaves. And, like, he does all of this and cheats on his wife. And it's like, once his wife actually gets a you know, does anything he's like dismissive of her is. Ugh. I think it's, there, there it's, is a point in the show though where it stops being mostly about Dawn and it moves over to Peggy. Peggy is such an intriguing please. character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peggy's kind of intriguing briefly until she like stabs her boyfriend because they live they're they're trying to oh yeah <laughs> yeah and and then she goes on to uh uh you know um oh for god's sakes brain come on catch up <laughs> i know it's late <sighs> it is it is very late uh uh i'm so close it's okay. Take your time. Handmaiden. Oh, yes. Hand- uh, Elizabeth yep. Moss. Yeah. Yeah, Elizabeth Moss, who was, like, in uh, Fences and... Uh, Picket Fence. Okay. Picket Fence. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Picket but- Fences... It was a dumb. It was a dumb show. Anyway, oh, okay. I just I, I don't know. There's just something about the show that I, I I could I could because it was it was appointment TV. It was 
it was fun to watch. I love that era. And it, it, there, there was that point though where um, they, I think that when when they ended it, I didn't feel like it was still a slog to get through to get to that ending. That last season had its moments. Mm. But I, yeah, I, I still haven't watched that last season. I'm like, I'll get to it eventually, but I don't care about the characters enough anymore to bother. Mm. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> They they got they got pretty tedious at the end. It's like okay, yep, all right, yeah. It's like can you just can you just get together already and stop denying your love? <laughs> oh boy! I love the early seasons, and part of it was just the fact that the the channel airing it like put in commercial breaks that were like we're going to give you scoops on the advertising industry from that period. Yeah. And the closest thing we ever got was that um, Canada Dry Ginger Ale is made with real ginger. Hmm. <laughs> I would actually, I'm, I'm interested in going back and trying, because I didn't, that's not a show that I think I feel like I should need to go back and watch again, but maybe I will. Oh. See, maybe this time, because I can see where things are coming. I mean, it's it's a very di- – the first season is very different from the final season, just in terms of how attitudes change and how um, – you know, just, just the eras. There, that's a large swath of time between season one and the final season, which I think was like season eight or something. I yeah. don't even know. I don't even know. I think I watched the first episode and never never bothered oh. continuing. I'm just endlessly it's, intrigued by it. It's it's definitely not your thing, Mike. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a funny thing where, like, Sarah Koenig uh, mentioned the fact that they made a reference to it on Mad Men and mispronounced her father's name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was, it was primarily, I watched it primarily because, again, it, you know, it's like Outlander for you, you know, because... yeah. That it was like Diane watched it, so I watched it. Right. You know? Right. Right. So I did. So I did have, you know, I, I will admit, you know, the, you know, Christina Hendricks made it worthwhile for me every once in a while. <laughs> well, of course. Oh, yeah. Christina Hendricks is amazing. Let us see her in uh, Firefly and John Hamm. I have seen him in some uh, rare ass stuff, and he is great no matter what he does. I love John Hamm. I think oh, he John is Hamm. just. He is just. It, it's friend. amazing. It, it, how is a guy that handsome, also that funny, is really just the, I just, it'll never, that science yeah, doesn't does. match up. I he, know why. He, he, he has comedic chops. Oh, he absolutely does. does. I, I know why he's so funny. Because he, he uses John Ham's John Ham. <laughs> the ham you can eat in the bathroom. Ham and bubbly. <laughs> Me and my partner, Michael Bubbly. You are skating on the thinnest ice right now. Um... <laughs> It is, he is, he is brilliant. I love, I I just love when he does anything for comedy, especially like in Bridesmaids and everything. But, but he's what kept me going on that show. He really, he really was. He was fantastic. And I love Elizabeth Moss and I love John Slattery. So. But John Slattery is a local boy, so we have to love him. Of course. Actually, I think John Hamm is, as well. Hmm. None as much. I, I, oh, maybe he attended a local school. I don't. I don't know. So. But John John Slattery is is definitely a local boy. Yeah. So, well, that was a, that was a fun conversation. <laughs> no, John John here from Missouri. Oh, he is okay. Then never mind. I I don't know what I'm talking yeah, yeah. about. It's late. So anyway, folks, thank you guys. That was a great. That was fun. I'm like, thanks for bringing up this this topic. This is this is good. Blame it on Titans. Yep, blame it on Titans, and I, I will actually. I totally will because fuck that show. Um, but anyway, so uh, we figure by the time we actually get around to recording again, it'll be the Christmas season, and uh, we've decided that this time we're going to do a little bit of a ranking, which we're going to need your help with, as we always do when we do our rankings. We're going to celebrate the 12 specials 
of Christmas. So we're looking at the top six best and the top six worst <laughs> television Christmas specials ever. And I am throwing this out here right now. The Star Wars Holiday Special is not considered a Christmas special. First of all, it was released in November. And secondly, it's Wookiee Life Day, you Luddites. So. <laughs> not dealing with it. I'm not dealing with it. It's, it's low-hanging fruit. It doesn't even factor into the conversation. So if you want to get in on this, obviously we'll be putting out our, our, our asks for it, especially when we start asking some of our friends for their full, for their full 12, because I really want to see what, I'm more actually interested in what you're going to pick for the worst, because those are always more fun. You know, you're going to have your old standbys for the best, but the worst is going to be gold. But again, <laughs> the rules are they got to have been broadcast on television and they got to be specifically Christmas or, you know what, we'll say Christmas or Hanukkah. We'll be, we'll be inclusive here. Um, yep. But, yep, six best, six worst. And you can let us know what your thoughts are on that at, um, on Twitter at Geek Salad Radio, on Facebook at Geek Salad Podcast. And uh, you can even email us those at Geek Salad um, Radio at gmail.com. So, guys, anything I'm leaving out here? Are we, we good? We're ready to rock and roll before I start telling you where you can get more of our episodes. No, I think you covered it. All right, cool. So, anyway, you can check out our full archive wherever you got this podcast because that's how that works. Um, <laughs> so, thank you again for everybody who contributed. And until next time, I'm Andy. I'm Mike. I'm Joe. I'm Catherine. Go forth and be nerd cool. Talk to you later. Bye. 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 Fuck Batman.